I'm Stefan Bauman. Welcome to the Grand View. America's National Parks Through the Eyes of an Artist. And it was a couple weeks ago that I put it out. It was our last talk. I got so many people on YouTube that contacted me saying, oh my God, how did you know this was especially for me? <laughs> and there were lots of people. And I had several conversations about people that were completely stuck. Completely stuck. And uh, some of these people are amazing <coughs> artists, but they just can't move forward. And that's one of the problems we have it or, as artists. Um, usually in a corporation you have people that just sit around and think of ideas and they brainstorm. And then they pass it on to the next people to, to make those happen. But artists are self-motivating, self-working, self-everything. You're by yourself. And oftentimes it's like when you're in um, a, a situation, when you're so deep in a situation, what happens is kind of like when your computer all of a sudden gets too many thoughts at one time. And you, some of you have had that where you like open up a website and before you, you say, no, that's not where I want to go. I want to go over here. And then you, you go, no, I, I don't even want to be there. And then all of a sudden that spinning wheel comes up and it just stops. On your computer, it's just too much info. And then you have to push the button and hold it down and reboot your computer. That's kind of how artists are. And so staying motivated about painting, sometimes we're so heavy in what we should do, what workshops we need to be doing, what kind of, kind of direction we need to take, that we just kind of get a little bit overwhelmed. And a lot of my students right now, and even in this group here, are interested in kind of taking their art to the next level. But how do you do that? And part of it is creating a mission statement, which we've talked about before. <laughs> Part of it is actually acknowledging that what you're doing is really important and taking a breath and really working towards that. And so I'm going to go into a, direct, a direction of painting right now and I, there's, it's a whole uh, different arm than what I've been working with. But I found the organization that's the leading <coughs> company or the leading organization that's, that does this kind of art. So, you know, if you're into plain air painting, you want to make sure that you go to like the, the top possible plain air uh, group. If you're doing portrait, you'd be part of the portrait society and you want to actually just contact them. And it was interesting because I was just on Facebook. I looked up their Facebook and I pulled it up and I said, so what does it take to be part of your organization? And the person emailed me back about a week or just through instant messages. Came back about a week and a half, two weeks later. And she listed, she says, well, you know, you have to be good. Don't be um, upset if you don't get in. We have everybody in the world that wants to be part of our organization. We only pick six or eight people every year. So you're going to probably have to put it, uh, reapply, 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 reapply. And our deadlines are here and here. And then underneath that, she gave solid gold. She says, we're not looking for this kind of painting, we're looking for these kind of paintings. And so specifically, she actually told me what they're looking for, so I don't spend a lot of time uh, wasted doing something that they're totally not interested in. Okay? So The next thing to staying motivated is finding opportunities to share your work. Remember, artists are in the business of communication. We're like authors, we're like musicians. We create, but we can't create into an empty room. If you don't have an audience that doesn't look at your work, if you don't have an audience that is participating in what you have to say, you will probably not be motivated to paint very long. If you create a dinner party, there's a lot of anticipation you might look up a new recipe, you really work hard, but if 
if you were going to make dinner for yourself, you probably wouldn't put that same energy in for yourself. You probably would rely on something that was easy to do. And like I said, eventually, if you do that every night, eventually top ramen is good enough for you. <laughs> so, so you've got to kind of watch out because you could end up just painting top ramen paintings. And a few people that I've contacted, they had to, in order for them to survive, they had to almost like, diminish the quality of their paintings. They had to almost paint down to a public, down to a, a something that was affordable. Remember, as artists, we're not here to produce work that other people can afford. It's not our opportunity to lower our prices so that other people can afford our work. You don't, you don't do that as an artist. You might do that as a computer company. You have a real high-end computer, and then you would have a low-end. But it's almost certain suicide if you start dumbing down your paintings so that you can start selling them. And then you spend so much time producing that work because you're a one-man band that you never get back to the quality of work that you really anticipate your work should be. <clears throat> what kind of artwork do you want to actually accomplish? And when they would tell me about it, it would be completely different than the work that they were doing. Completely different. And so I would say, so if you could produce the work that you envision, and all of us have that vision of the kind of work we want to do, then you would be happy and motivated. And they'd say yes. And I said, well, how do you feel now? And they say frustrated and tired. <laughs> you know, you know. And so I just told them, stop it. Stop going down that road. Actually envision another path for yourself. And one of those visions are to participate in art shows. Now, almost every art, sh almost every art show out there advertises in American artists, art of, the, um, art of the West, all of these different magazines are out there for a call for artists. You've seen them. I have several students right now that are in this quest of looking for art clubs and mu museums and galleries to show their work. And oftentimes these call to artists also request for you to put in 25, 30, 50 dollars. And you have to be very, very careful of how you pick and choose your shows and being very, very careful of how you spend your money. Now when we open up the back of uh, American Artists, for instance, and they have the last page that says Call for Artists, and they have all of these wonderful shows, one after another, looking for paintings that represent the West, looking for poppy paintings, looking for this. But you have to be careful how you pick and choose your, your galleries, your, your shows. Um, just imagine, right now I could, I could say, I'm going to have an art show. And I'm going to have it, I can make up a place, let's say Mount Shasta where I live. And I could put a call for artists. Looking for quality paintings for a major art show. Uh, please send a picture of your painting and $25 to participate. And I probably would get hundreds of responses. I could probably get hundreds of responses. And I could probably never have that show. I could just collect the checks. Oh. It's almost a great con game. You know, if you think about it, artists are desperate enough that they will actually take any straw. They grasp at straws going, oh, it's like buying the lottery. You know, except it's a little more expensive. A lottery is $2. An entrance to a show is $25. So I would say the first thing you have to do is that you have to pull up their website, their organization. Never participate in a show that it's the first year. Because you want to make sure the show exists. On their website, in their bios, they should have photographs of their show actual proof that they have the show to begin with. Okay. So Second, you need to look at the work that's in the show. Don't look at the work, don't read their description and think you can fit into that show. What you want to do is you want to pull up the page where they have pictures of past, and pre past shows, previous shows, and you want to look at the paintings that are on the wall and ask yourself, 
would my paintings fit into that show? Because chances are they have a certain kind of genre, a certain kind of painting style that that group particularly likes. And if you're a photorealist, and if you open that up and every painting in that show, as far as you can see the photo with all those smiling pictures with people with glass smugs and things like that having cheering and taking selfies, if all the way you down there you see impressionist work, probably they're not going to be interested in something that's photorealistic. Mm -hmm. So you really want to try to get the show to match the kind of painting you do. A uh, show that has some longevity. Then a second thing is that you have this investment of $25, $30. What are they doing with that money? So oftentimes you'll see a show and they go, we have first, second, and third prizes. It's cheap to go buy some ribbons. And if everybody, if everybody goes and, and buys in galleries, there are a lot of galleries right now, this is how they pay the rent. Major show in a major city, you know, New York, everybody submit, they have 300, 400 people sending $50, and they give first, second, and third ribbons away. You want money prizes. Go for the money, go for big money, $1,000, 2000 3 No, there used to be a show called uh, Arts for the Park. And the first year they had it, the cash prize was $100,000. And the thing is, that's nothing. I mean, if you watch people doing golf, they have golf awards, a half a million dollars and a new car. <laughs> Artists get like, oh, a ribbon and maybe $12. <laughs> I was like, um, bowlers, I would have made more money if I was a bowler because, you know, that was initially what I won. They have a $25,000 first prize winner and then you go to these art shows and like $250 first prize, $50 for everyone else. It's like, oh my God. And so you have to ask yourself, this show that's asking $25, $30, now there's cost to putting together a show, but there's cost for any company that's in business. So they can't just rely on the money coming in to pay their rent. If you're going to participate in a show, it should be a, uh, there should be a cash award. If they're actually asking for cash, there should be a proportional amount of cash at the other end for you to win. And all what you're trying to see is if there's some integrity in the show. If there is no cash prizes that are worth a significant amount for them to be gathering that money, you have to ask, what are they really interested in? paying their rent or participating in the show. And then I would say, okay, $20, you got in, now ship your painting. Now you've got shipping, okay? Not only there, but back again. So any show you get into could cost you several hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So like if you participate in a show in Colorado, uh, you could end up spending a lot of money and then you have to ask yourself, is the cost worth the exposure. Now you said the Trident Museum. If you put a museum into your portfolio, mm -hmm. into your bio, and it's a Trident Museum, that's worth money. Mm -hmm. Putting a show up that I made up and you ship your paintings and come back again, it's not. So you could spend a lot of money running around to all these insignificant art shows, putting in a lot of money and time for shipping and handling and make sure that things are not damaged and along the way and all this stuff. It can get very, very complex. So you have to ask yourself, is this the stature? Is this the quality of show I want? Not just any show. So you have to make sure that the investment afterwards is worthy of putting the time in. So don't accept every show that's out there. But there are certain competitions that, are, that would make a difference. The Triton show would be great. Any museum show is good. When you put in a museum, it gives you the credibility that you are an artist because the word museum kind of has that feeling like somebody else is viewing your work saying it's good. So museum shows are great. Galleries, there's galleries all over the place. I don't know if a gallery in some place in Arizona in some little town is worthy of going to because they probably don't have the same qualifications. What's really, really good are magazine shows. Magazines. So like Artists of America, um, some companies um, like Raymar has, has, a, has a, 
uh, a show. And, and like Raymar, um, this is the bold brush contest I think that they have. Um, those are worthy because what they do is they put your image, your face, and your painting into their advertising. Uh, magazines put your images first, second, third, fourth. Who cares about the cash prize? You get a full page ad in their magazine which is worth thousands of dollars. The Plain Air Salon, the Plain Air Magazine has a competition every year. It's $30 per painting that you submit. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of money and they, they have the submissions throughout the year. But the grand prize is the cover of Plain Air Magazine. I mean, you know, I have seen artists that went from zero to stature just by winning that award. So if you're going to play for something, that's something to play for. That's what you have to do. And then what you do is you look at other winners. Look at other, what they're looking for. If you're going to do the Plain Air uh, Magazine competition, which I highly recommend, the, look at the winners. Look at the, not just the first place winners, but look at what they're choosing. Try to fit into their genre. Try to participate in the kind of work that they do. And then submit, submit, submit. Now, I wouldn't go into your closet and find a painting that might fit. Because that's not being extraordinary. Remember, we're talking about being motivated. So what's best is to look at the criteria into the organization or into the magazine, try to find out what is it, what are they looking for, and then create with winning in mind. Actually create something for that competition. So if you're looking at the back of American Artists and you're looking at all those galleries and all those things and you hit something, that looks like, wow, this is like really in a popular place. It's downtown Houston. And then you read further on and they're looking for Western work. Then it's like, wow, that could get really some exposure on that. You might pull up their website, look into their gallery, see what kind of work, and you go, ah, oh, they don't want to have close-ups of cowboys. They like the big grand vista. So you paint them something like that. And then you paint with every fiber of your body to win that award. Now, now you're taking, when you're not motivated, into gear. You're actually painting towards something. And the key is not to stop there. Go to the next level, go to the next competition. Load up your calendar with these deadlines. Find out. Right now I have several of my pain, uh, painters that are professional painters. I said, uh, uh, Oil Painters of America are having a deadline coming up. The Portrait Society of uh, Painters, are, are there's a deadline coming up. Paint something for them. That will motivate you. Paint something that you think is going to win the award. That will motivate you. Don't dig into your past. Create something that is extraordinary. Blow them away. One of the, the, artist, one of the artists said, but they've gone into such an abstract kind of way, then try it. Try to go into more into that direction. Maybe your work needs to go into that direction. Maybe what you've done in the past isn't you know, viable anymore. And even if it's just one painting, it's better than sitting there going, my life is d diminishing and I can't be an artist and I can't make this work anymore. You can actually create it. Another thing that you need to watch out for are galleries. Now it's very common that you see galleries will say, well, you submit your work to our gallery um, and we'll... Because artists are desperate. About. Any gallery that asks you to, for $30 to review your portfolio, don't go towards that gallery. A profitable, well-established gallery is not going to ask you to send $30 along with your portfolio. You have to ask yourself why. Because you could be the next best thing and they're telling you to spend $30 for them to look at you. It's like, excuse me? So if you want to get into some major galleries and you're thinking, I'm going to submit my work to people who run the galleries, you want to be sure that uh, if they ask, well, we want $30 with your submission, that's not a reputable gallery. And a reputable gallery will be more than happy to pay for postage back and forth. If not, you can put 
uh, a return envelope if you want your portfolio back. But the reality is they can't, they don't know if you're the next best thing. And furthermore, they shouldn't be looking to pay their rent by people who are submitting paintings. Mm -hmm. That's their job. They don't do anything else. They no longer promote artists. They don't do anything out there except just turn on the light switch. They don't have to pay for their, for their wares in there. And a lot of their staff works on commission. The dress store next door has to pay for the lights in the building just like the gallery does. And their staff, most of the people who work in those gift shops are not on commission. They're being paid too. And they have to pay all of their merchandise. Where in a gallery, if you don't sell, they just pack up your stuff and send it back to you. Oftentimes at your cost. But a dress store or a gift store actually has to discount and discount and discount to try to get their investment back. So you can see it's very uh, luring to, to get involved with the gallery, but they can screw you. Now that uh, we were talking, there's also a few art scams you have to pay attention to. And then we'll get into our critique. But one scam that's out there is because we're so desperate and people know that and so their scam is like uh, I just saw your painting on a website and my wife she's just bugging me about it I have to buy that painting and you go great but there's a caveat they're moving to the Philippines so they're going to send you a check to hold mm -hmm. and when they move to the Philippines they're going to have somebody else contact you to ship. Their shipping company will actually ship it for you. I mean it sounds very leering and in order for all this trouble we're actually going to give you more money. Mm -hmm. Okay? No. <laughs> Artists are so desperate they're making lots of money on that. They're making lots and lots of money on that. If somebody says I want to buy your painting you say fine put that money into my PayPal account, I will send you the, no other end deals. And you want to work with PayPal or some bank card to make sure the money is there. Don't take a check, don't take any money orders, nothing, because all of that stuff could be manufactured. Don't believe any hard luck story, don't believe in anybody that's moving that they're going to give you more, that's all just a pie in the sky, so don't do that. Another thing that you have to worry about are websites that guarantee you getting in front of people. Now one of the websites that are, uh, that's out there that's really prominent right now is that there are people that supposedly have portfolios and they take you to the art expo. And they say, well we are going to get your paintings in front of millions of galleries. It's like for $30 you'll be part, actually it's a little more, it's like several hundred dollars. We'll put you into the portfolio, we'll take you to New York, you'll be in the expo, and we'll make sure that people see your work. And if you imagine if there's two, three, four hundred people that do that, at 30, that's a lot of it pays for their expo thing. Scam. Yeah. Okay. If you're not going to be seen by anybody in a portfolio. You're not going to be seen. No gallery owner is going to go to the expo and sit there for three hours going through a portfolio looking for your work. They're looking for a way to cover their expenses to go there. They may put you in a portfolio, but nobody's ever going to open that portfolio and look at it. That's not the way art is. So stay away from that. And also stay away from any art site that charges you to be a painting on the wall in their website. A lot of people who don't know how to do websites are lured into, like right now Amazon is, they have the crafts section right now. If you don't put in exactly the painting that you want by whatever, they're not going to find you in the millions of pictures that are out there. And even Amazon's charging $40 a month or something like that to be part of them. For, and you would have to have a specific, and, and um, she actually looked up I'm not using her name, so it's, um, she actually looked up her name and then the genre name and, the, you know, and, and she called up the guy, she says, my painting is, well, you have to be really specific and it's like, well, you can't imagine somebody on a Google search. If they do that, they can very well just go right to your website. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of scamish to sit and think that you're going to be all of a sudden found in this wallpaper of all these paintings. Stay away from any of those things. Mm -hmm. okay. okay? So... I know how motivational that is, <laughs> but you want to find you want to find some organizations, you want to find some shows, you want to find some museums, you want to find some galleries that will motivate you. Any questions? Mm -hmm.